You are listening to the ABC Business Show, and here are your hosts, Kerry, Elise, and MJ. Hello, and welcome to the ABC Business Show, where we help entrepreneurs make their dreams a reality. My name is Kerry Postel, and I am here with the fabulous ladies, as always. Hey, Elise. Good morning. Hey, MJ. How is everybody? Doing good. We are on podcast 18. By the way, if you have missed any of our earlier podcasts, then make sure you go back and uh, listen to those and so you can catch up on all the information and uh, the, the tips and tricks we've got to help you as you start your business as an entrepreneur. Absolutely. So on podcast 18 today, we are talking about an employee versus a contractor. So let's kick off with quote for the day. MJ, do you want to share that? Sure. If everyone is moving forward together, then success takes care of itself. That was Henry Ford. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. He knew a thing or two. He sure did. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So today's opening question is, uh, tell us, what is the difference between an employee and a contractor? So we're going to do this a little bit differently. So Elise and I are going to role play a little bit. So um, Elise is going to be the employee. Okay. And I'm going to be the independent contractor. Oh, so, interesting. So uh, Elise, you want to go first on yours? Sure. So the fundamental difference between these two is what we're going to kind of show you guys. And since I'm the employee, I'm actually working for someone else's business. Uh-huh. Whereas with myself as the independent contractor, I'm running my own business. Correct. Also, guess what? I am paid hourly or salary or by piecework. And as an independent contractor, I'm paid upon the completion of a project. Wow. So when I work, I use my employees' materials. I use the tools they give me my computer. I get provided everything. Whereas as an independent contractor, I have to provide my own materials, my own tools and equipment. So that would be like maybe my own laptop and that sort of thing. Wow. So I work for just my company. I have an agreement that I'm not allowed to work for somebody else with what I do. So I have, you know, one company I work for. Whereas the independent contractor, I can work for multiple clients. Right. So I also want to keep my job. I want to stay with this company for at least 10 years. I see a lot I can learn. So I want to continue my relationship with my current company. Whereas my relationships as an independent contractor are just temporary until that project is completed. And then I'm looking for my next client for my next project. Yes. I'm, I, that's why I like being an employee. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the other thing is my employer, my boss, decides when and how the work I'm doing will be performed. Whereas as an independent contractor, I decide when and how I will perform the work. So I cannot be uh, told what needs to be done when I decide that. I have the project. I decide how that happens. I get assigned my work as an employee, and that's what I do. Whereas for me, I decide what work I will do. So hopefully that gave you a good idea as to the difference between the employee and the independent contractor. You can see that each one had you know, an opposite aspect of how they should work. And look, taking that into consideration as a new business owner and you're in the hiring process, it's easy to see with that explanation, the difference between the two. So it makes it easier for you to decide up front exactly how you're going to approach the hire. And if it's something that you're not sure about, that you we always say like, go Google it. There's so much information on the internet about this that can help you to determine that. Because I just had one client uh, come to me and said, oh, I'm going to hire so-and-so as an independent contractor. And I'm like, well, why are you going to do that? Oh, because that's what they want to do. And I'm just like, well, there's a little bit more to it than you deciding you want to hire them as an independent contractor. Right. I said, we have to look at a bigger picture here. So I think that's something as well that you know, people need to educate themselves on. Definitely. And one of the best places to go is the for the United States is going to be the U.S. Department of Labor. There is an act in the U.S. called Fair Labor Standards Act. That's where all the rules, no matter how complicated the um, the process or the position that you're trying to fill is and what ideas you have on compensation, the rules are there and you can kind of find them. Most business owners work really hard to figure out to make sure they're in compliance with that and it just makes the business run smoother. So what was that called again? The Fair Labor Standards Act. 
Okay. And you find that under the federal department or the U.S. Department of Labor. All right. Wage and hour division is the ones that set up all the rules and regulations. So, yeah, definitely something that, you know, client, uh, that uh, business owners need to look into. Uh, I know with my business, uh, I've chosen to have employees. So I have in my team, they come to my office. I've supplied their laptops. You know, they come in when they're told to. I've given them the work to do. I'm giving them the deadlines and what has to be done. But there's a lot of people in my industry, you know, doing bookkeeping who use independent contractors. Yeah. And, you know, they're using them, you know, as remote employees from all across the country. And yep, those are contractors supplying their own laptop. You know, you would give them the project. Okay. This is your client. You know what has to be done on it. And then you allow the contract to decide, okay, I'm going to work on that on Wednesday this week. Right. You know, I wouldn't be able to determine when that would be. So, you know, with my industry, there's the two sides of doing it, but there's two very different ways of treating them. That is correct. And the reason you have that in your industry is because you guys fall in the classification of professionals. So when you fall in a certain classification and the business owner, the new business owner now, you're not an employee, Mm -hmm. but you are an executive. You are an owner and running a business. So you qualify in that same professional grouping. So you don't really fit in the classification of employee except for federal internal revenue service compensation rules. So what we have to do is make sure that we learn the basics of the hiring and how you're going to treat your employees and make sure they're classified correctly. Right now, we're just talking about employee versus independent contractor. Mm -hmm. There are different types of employees as well. So when you're hiring an administrator that's going to be working in the office, then they get compensated differently or can be compensated differently than hourly. What we find is when we've had to deal with audits from Mm -hmm. the Internal Revenue Service or the Department of Labor, that you fall on the safe side and you pay people by the hour and let them work 40 hours a week and that's it. (laughs) Yeah. So maybe just as a reminder to our listeners so that when you have an employee, then they, is the big, as the business owner, you are then paying, you know, the matching social security and Medicare wages. And then obviously the unemployment tax as well. Right. Uh, when you're paying an independent contractor, they're going to submit an invoice to you, say $500 and you're going to pay $500. And then the independent contractor is then responsible for all of the taxes on that. So um, I think some people often think, Oh, I'm going to hire an independent contractor. It'll be cheaper. Right. But you normally find that the independent contractor is probably going to cost the same in the long run because they're taking into account all the taxes they're going to have to pay on their side. So wow, that's so just something, you know, for p- people to think about as well. That is exactly it is, correct. It's really important when you're setting up a company to understand what makes sense for your business because there's so many different factors involved in this. Right. You know, I mean, all the way down from Carrie, when you're saying, you know, you can tell them to come into work these days because they're employees, whereas the independent contractor can choose to start that project on Wednesday. Right. So it, it really is really finite details. And it's important for you to look at that before you hire your first person to really understand what's involved in both. And one of the best examples of that is the construction industry. Okay. So in the construction industry, you might have a contractor, a general contractor, and he has employees. Yeah. Employees perform certain jobs. Yeah. But then they will do a contract. So this is where we get independent contractor, the definition of contract. Contract is an agreement to perform. So they will go to another company that specializes in something else. Then they will do a contract with that other company. So that other company invoices them. Okay. So sometimes you're dealing with a company, they're not called independent contractors, they're a separate corporation. But when you're hiring an individual that has certain talent that you need, they could be an independent contractor depending on how they do business. So there's certain things that you have to do. You know, you have to get a W-9 form. You have to make sure that they actually are out there. In the construction company, you have to get insurance certificates to prove that they are indeed independent contractors. Yes. So there's a lot of consequences to misclassifying. Yes. And so that's what we just want to avoid is get educated on it and to avoid the misclassification because what happens in misclassification is that the federal government can come back and penalize and charge taxes and things like that 
And there might be some businesses as well where they might be able to hire someone as an independent contractor, but they want the element of control. And I think that's where, you know, that's for me, that's why I don't hire independent contractors because I want to be able to say, hey, I need you to work on this file and I need it have it done by, you know, this date. And, you know, technically I would not be able to do that for an independent contractor. So again, I think if the business owner is, has a service or a product or whatever the situation is where they want to or need to have that control over a, something being done by a certain time, then an employee is just the best, best way to go um, to keep everybody happy. That is absolutely correct. Totally correct. So defining your job descriptions and how you're going to be treating someone as an employee or independent contractor, just ascertaining as you go, it's step-by-step process. Don't You don't need to look at independent contractors unless the job calls for it, mm-hmm. the project calls for it. You look at the employees, you learn all the rules with that. Then you're starting to build your base and a foundation for your company to launch off of. Yeah, I think some people look at having employees, like, oh, then I got to deal with payroll, then I got to do this. Yes. But, you know, it's not always going to you know save you money going the independent contractor route like we discussed as well. So it's kind of, it's about doing the right thing, not trying to do the easiest thing that's not always going to be a benefit to your company. So Perfect. Exactly. That's the hitting the nail on the head, Carrie. Yeah, so, absolutely. So to summarize, we basically kind of got three areas. You've got that behavioral control as to who directs the control of the work to be performed. You've got that financial control as to, you know, who has the right to direct or control the financial business aspects of the job. And then you've got that relationship. Um, as, you know, how do they perceive their interaction with um, one another? And you know, are the contracts, benefits, and all that kind of thing. So, well, I think we shared a lot of information today. That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so that always makes me think, maybe we should just be talking to a professional. <laughs> Enough with Google, so, right? Maybe, yeah, if you're not sure, it's definitely something to ask about and get your, you know, direction from someone who knows so that you can make the best decision but not always the best decision the right decision right so make sure you're not going to get yourself in hot water down the road it might be simple but not easy and Mm -hmm. you just got to talk to the people that know that is absolutely correct and that's actually our tip for the week (laughs) (laughs) and we have a podcast coming up later on regarding the same thing okay good good awesome so hopefully that helped you to determine going forward as to whether you need to be having employees or contractors and uh, as always, if you're not sure, then speak to a professional. Okay, ne- join us next week for Podcast 19, where MJ will be talking about coaching your team. So you'll see we've got a little bit of a theme going on here. And MJ's been talking about hiring talent, and then she talked about having the process for hiring. So now she's moving to the next step of coaching your team as well. So make sure you join us for that one. If you have not hit subscribe on our podcast, then go ahead and do that. And then feel free to share our podcast as well. And we will see you next week. Thanks for listening. Sure will. See you then. Bye-bye. You have been listening to the ABC Business Show with Carrie, Elise, and MJ. Make sure you tune in next week.